Hello there. Welcome to Sean Academy. Today in this video we're going to learn how to start a thrift store business. My name is Sarah and I will be your instructor in this video. Before we start a thrift store business, let's take a closer look at what goes into starting one and how we can make yours profitable. Getting your initial inventory and keeping your store stocked is one of the most difficult aspects of starting and running a thrift shop. You can sell used items that you have purchased or that have been donated, or you can buy from wholesalers, who are frequently Chinese suppliers who sell low-cost goods. You'll also need to obtain the necessary licenses, handle your sales taxes correctly, and decide whether you want to run your business for profit or non-profit. Before you begin your research, you must first decide what you want to sell. You can compete with Goodwill, the Salvation Army, and other similar stores by selling used items. You can sell low-cost new items. You could sell scuffed and damaged goods that large retailers can't sell and heavily discount them to local resellers. You can also operate as a consignment store, which may bring in inventory without requiring you to spend money on it. People will bring you items to sell and will pay you a percentage of the sale price. If the items do not sell, they are returned to the consigner. According to Second Avenue Thrift Superstore, the difference between a consignment or discount goods store and a thrift store is that thrift stores are typically associated with a charity. A non-profit based model is likely to generate a large number of donations, in part because people receive a tax deduction for them. They feel good about donating their items as well. You'll also get a number of tax breaks. You must ensure that the majority of your profits go to your charity, or the IRS will classify you as a for-profit entity. According to Charity Watchdogs, nonprofits spend between two-thirds and 75% of their revenue on the charity's mission. That means that if you earn $150,000 per year, spend $75,000 on business expenses, and pay yourself a $50,000 salary, you'll only be able to donate $25,000 to charity, which is insufficient to satisfy the IRS. Your other operating expenses are reasonable, but it may appear unprofessional if the Form 990 tax documents you file each year show that you pay yourself more than you donate to your charity partner. Meet with an attorney or tax advisor who specializes in working with nonprofits to determine the cost of establishing a charity, the types of benefits you'll receive, and the types of record-keeping you'll need to do. If you live in a wealthy neighborhood with many residents and few or no other thrift stores, you may be able to generate significant donations. If not, you may have to purchase your inventory. You can look for toys, clothing, exercise equipment, kitchen appliances, sporting goods, and other items at swap meets, garage sales, and yard sales. Many professional sellers go to garage and yard sales as early as possible to pick out items that they can resell for three to four times or more their purchase price. Some arrive near the end of the day, offering to haul away a homeowner's unsold goods in exchange for a small fee. If you want to sell new items, look for suppliers on websites like Alibaba who sell low-cost items that you can resell for a high profit. For example, cat laser toys that retail for $10 or more may only cost you 80 or 90 cents. If you're going the donation or consignment route, you should start advertising and putting up signs long before you open. You will not only need to gather sufficient inventory, but you may also need to clean or repair much of it, price it, and display it. Never start a business without a launch strategy and post-launch operating manual. This will help you determine your thrift store goals, as well as how much money you'll need to start the business and pay your bills each month. There are numerous free business plan templates available online, but having your plan reviewed for free by a SCORE mentor will increase your chances of success. The store's location is one of the most important factors to consider. Will you lease or buy your store? You might want to rent until you see how things go with the business. Be aware that if you want to renew your lease when it comes up for renewal, your landlord will know you're doing well and may raise your rent. Managing your legal responsibilities, such as insurance, business license, seller's permit, sales tax account, and other issues, will be a part of your thrift shop business plan. Speak with a small business attorney who can guide you through these steps. Because a thrift store is a retail business, you must drive traffic to it. On-site signage and ongoing marketing communications campaigns are required. 
set up accounts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, and YouTube for social media campaigns. If you're a charity, ask other businesses to help you promote yourself by allowing you to display brochures or flyers on their premises. Local radio and television advertising may be less expensive than you think, and stations frequently include free commercial production with a contract, so check their rates. Learn the best practices for displaying retail merchandise, setting up checkout counters, creating the right traffic flow, and handling security by conducting online research. Learn about the best practices for in-store and window signage. People will spend more money if you make it easier for them to buy. If you found this video useful, please show your appreciation by clicking the like button. Also, let us know in the comments if you'd like us to make a long, comprehensive follow-up video to learn more about how to start a thrift store business. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button to see more videos from Sean Academy. An extension for education.